Hi, welcome to Storytime at your creation station. Today we're going to be reading a book, How I Became a Pirate, by Melinda Long and Dave Shannon. So this book is part of our Storytime series where we read a, uh, read a book and then we will um, have a ceramic figure to paint. Uh, for this particular book, we were painting a ceramic pirate, uh, and you see here is one that came out of the kiln that's been painted and, and done already. Uh, so what we do is we read the book, and then um, and then you paint your pirate. Um, we used to do it at the studio, but uh, we're going to be doing them online for the time being. So here we go. Let's see if, if we can not start reading uh, the book, How I Became a Pirate. How I Became a Pirate, written by Melinda Long and illustrated by David Shannon. Pirates have green teeth when they have any teeth at all. I know about pirates because one day when I was at the beach building a sandcastle and minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was because its flag had a skull and crossbones on it, and because I could hear pirates singing, hey ho, blow the man down, they were a little off key. Hmm, that's always a good way to know when you see a pirate, huh? They're singing like that. Uh-oh, what's going on here? I tried to tell Dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. That must be Dad there. I tried to tell mom, but she was busy slathering my baby sister with sunblock. Ooh, looks like baby sister doesn't want some sunblock. So I went back to my sandcastle, but I kept an eye on the pirates. By then, they were rowing to shore. Oh, here they come. He's getting ready. He's, he sees them coming. Check it out. There's a little sippy cup, huh? That sippy cups must be in there. <clears throat> when they landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy there, matey. Be this the Spanish main? No, I said. This is North Beach. <laughs> Shiver me timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. Hmm. I wonder if he ran into Bugs Bunny there. Oh, man, what a mean-looking pirate. And he's got a parrot on his shoulder. He walked around my sandcastle. He looked at the moat, then yelled back to his crew, He's a digger, he is, and a good one to boot. A good one to boot. Hmm, the others agreed. What be your name, matey? The head pirate asked. Jerome Jacob, sir, I told him. Hmm, that must be, oh, Jeremy. Jeremy Jacob, sir. That must be Jeremy. Jerome must be on the uh, South Beach. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, we're looking at Braid Beard and his crew. We've been needing a digger like yourself. We've a chest of treasure to bury. No wonder why they're looking for somebody to dig some holes for him. Captains seem to do that, huh? Trying to get other people to row for him and dig their holes. How about that? I treasure the others shouted. You're coming with us, said Braid Beard, told me. Oh, Braid Beard, because he's got a beard with a braid. Hmm. I don't think Mom and Dad would mind as long as they get back in time for soccer practice the next day. Must be a big hole. That's how I became a pirate, just like that. And look, there he is. As soon as we were on board, Braid Beard showed me the chest of gold and jewels. Gotta find a safe place for this here treasure. It's high time we were off, he announced. We're off, everybody shouted. And then we set sail. Look at that. Jeremy's got all his stuff on, and these guys are pointing. They don't know where they're going. Hmm. There was plenty to do on board. The pirates taught me to sing sea shanties, the louder the better and to say real pirate stuff like landlover and scurvy dog.
That's the way you have to say it too. Scurry dog. By dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, Don't down the hatches, me ladies. Ah. <laughs> me laddies. I think I need some new glasses here. So Braid, <laughs> Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, Down the hatch, me laddies. Down the hatch, we all shouted. Huh, look at that. It looks like he's got some meat on his hook. He's eating a salami. Oh, look, he's not, he's not careful when the other guy's eating his, uh, his turkey stick. <laughs> Two eye patches. Oh. Braidbeard gulped his food and said, hand over the meat. The meat, we all roared. Nobody would have told us to finish our spinach. There wasn't any. Or to chew up our carrots. They weren't allowed on board. We talked with our mouth is, mouths full, and nobody said please or thank you. Man, huh, I like carrots. Oh, <laughs> there's a shark and a soccer ball. The shark, I didn't know shark, sharks played soccer. After dinner, I tried to teach the pirates to play soccer. Braidbeard kicked the ball and yelled, Arg soccer, arg soccer, the crew all yelled. Then everybody dove for the ball at once, and it rolled right off the deck. After it, me hearties, Braidbeard commanded. After it, we all whispered. We fought over who would get the ball. But it didn't matter anyway, because a shark came along and swallowed it in one gulp. <laughs> so much for soccer. How about that? Sharks don't play soccer, but they like to eat soccer balls, I guess. Well, he can't believe his eyes. Maybe that's why he's got the eye patches over him. By now, it was past my bedtime, but nobody tells pirates to go to bed, to take a bath, or to brush their teeth. Maybe that's why their teeth are green. Hmm. Pirates sleep with one eye open, just in case. And they don't change into pajamas unless they want to. Pirates, pirates don't do anything they don't want to, except for maybe swabbing the decks. I wanted to be a pirate forever. Hmm. Sounds like a good job when you can find it, huh? All right. But then I found out <clears throat> what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard. To t I asked, ah, when I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and read me a story. Tuck you in, he bellowed. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew cried. <laughs> The only thing they had to read was a map. Don't you have any books, I asked? Braidbeard looked confused. Books? I don't even bother to, I didn't even bother to ask about a goodnight kiss. Do you think pirates give out goodnight kisses? Probably not. Huh. Looks like he might get a goodnight lick on the cheek. <laughs> or a toe in his nose. That would stink. Hmm. It wasn't easy to fall asleep without a story, but I was finally dozing off when a storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed up against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. I couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeard shouted. Batten down the hatches. Hmm, that's what you got to do when a storm comes. Everybody ran around yelling, yelling and l lowering and battening. Oh, they were lowering the hatches and battening the sails, I guess. Nobody had time to sit close and tell me it would be over soon. Nobody even noticed me. I decided that I didn't want to be a pirate after all. Hmm. See, how about that? Sometimes it look, looks like it's going to be good work, but it doesn't turn out that way. Just then, flash, crash, crack. Lightning hit the mast and split it right down the middle. What do we do now, yelled one of the pirates. We'll have to turn back, called another. But the treasure, hollered Braidbeard. Where will we bury the treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know the perfect digging spot. Check that out. 
he's letting them know and they're all checking them out and listening that's a pretty cool picture there oh that must be a heavy chest when the storm was over we rode back to shore and buried the chest we drew a map so we could find the treasure again but i don't think he'll need it <laughs> look where he put it right in his backyard where the dog is oh and here comes the kitty cat i wonder if that kitty cat wants a cupcake after that, the pirates repaired the ship and got ready to set sail. Before they left, Braidbeard handed me a flag and said, You make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Guard that treasure well. We'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, they all yelled. And if you ever need us, Braidbeard asked, just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the others shouted. And maybe I will, but not today. He must be cold. He's got the flag wrapped around him. Ah, uh, I have soccer practice. And look, he plays for the Pirates. They must be from Pittsburgh. Oh, and that's it. There we go. How I became a pirate. That must be uh must be what happened to these guys here. All right, well, thanks again for tuning in. And um, this was How I Became a Pirate. Great book. Uh, this was actually my first time reading it. Um, Christine did it when we did it uh, live here at the studio at the time. Everybody was here. We all had fun painting pirates. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching.